Welcome to the most efficient off-season episode in a franchise mode series you'll ever see. I've done two revolutionary things in franchise mode this season. Firstly, I've added suspensions to Madden gameplay, which luckily didn't cause us too many problems last season. We only lost one semi-starter at one point, but of course, in the off-season, everyone goes home, hooks up with those bad influences from their young days, so the risk of losing plays to suspension is far from over. The second revolutionary thing is I've stopped wasting time in videos, cut out all the rambling, all the same things said three times in two different ways and that will continue here. Usually you'd see me dwelling on decisions, going back and forth, which I still do but it will all be summed up nice and concisely for you. So let's take the off season week by week, starting in the wildcard round. Now it's a pretty easy week, all of our practice squad players were signed and we can just move on except we've just received word of a suspension. Bobo Wilson Jr. has been notified of a suspension for substance abuse, which rules him out until week three next season, but he didn't really do much for us as we gave Miller kick return duties, so Wilson is a clear-cut candidate this off-season. More importantly, his contract has run out. He's a clear non-re-signing candidate this off-season. Moving on to the divisional round where Ronald Jones returns from injury and I said it during the season, if he can stay healthy there's a big role waiting for him, he's a good player and as we check the news we see this, Justin Watson, our surprise package at receiver last season has been involved in an accident. Now this is something that could happen at any point in the year so we're glad he waited until the off season. To, to start training for wrestling? Watson was injured whilst performing with WWE superstar Big E, apparently. Now, he did sustain an injury that will keep him out one to two weeks, which isn't so bad in the off-season, but lesson learned, not everyone can be Rob Gronkowski. After all that, it's nice to make the conference championship week with nothing to report. It seems that as soon as our season was over, our players lost their minds, but we get a break from it here. On to Pro Bowl week. So, we already looked at the Pro Bowl roster at the end of last week's episode, and a surprising number of our players made it in. However, one of those players won't be participating in the Pro Bowl as our left guard, Ali Marpet, was involved in a car accident. Now, everyone involved is okay, but Marpet broke his arm and is expected to miss around six weeks. Now, he should be good to go by the beginning of the preseason, but if there's one place we don't need any bad luck, it's on our offensive line. As we move on to the Super Bowl week, we see that the Cowboys and Patriots will be facing off against each other, a game I would argue will decide who America's team truly is in 2019. Well, it's 2020 now, technically. But for us, what's more important is that we can finally do some more scouting. Now, both of our outside linebackers performed beyond expectations last season, both reaching double-digit sacks. But if nothing else, we'll be looking for depth in the position. Unfortunately, not too many great players, and the best one has a bad track record with substance abuse. Moving on to the actual off-season now. The Cowboys won the Super Bowl. They retained the title of America's team. Good for them. But now I have to do what I hate the most because just like everything else in my life, I put it off until the very last moment. It's time to re-sign our players. But luckily for you, I'm going to sum up the whole thing in a very short amount of time. Eric Berry, back for one more year. Demar Dotson thinks he's too good for us despite allowing the second most sacks last season. And Doma Kinsu, not coming back. Shaquille Barrett sticking around for three more years and Noah Spence on the other side for another two. Now I wanted to bring Dion Buchanan back where well, he made some huge plays last season, so he's back. And as I said before, we won't be re-signing Bobo Wilson Jr. with his impending suspension. Now Bo Allen is back and in line to start next season as the roster stands right now and Peyton Barber was pretty cheap and an above average backup even though we didn't use him much last season. And then we come on to the huge question of this offseason. Did I spot it in the title? I don't even know at this point. Do we re-sign Jameis Winston? $119 million is just too much for us. We barely have any cap space as it is, and Winston hasn't proved to be a game-changing talent. Any quarterback will do well with the weapons this team has, and a lot of quarterbacks will be cheaper than $119 million. It's a huge risk as we know there are no good quarterbacks in this year's draft, so I offered him a reduced deal for two years because I didn't want to invest long-term in him, and he turned that down. We played our hand, we're going into free agency without a quarterback. As we head into the first week of free agency, we find out that backup linebacker Corey Nelson will be suspended for six weeks for personal conduct violations. Now, he was just a backup backup, and you know what that means. 
we're not keeping him around. So now we're in free agency and the rules are simple. Guys with bad history or bad injury history, except this person who happens to be the highest rated free agent, that's the kind of behavior we won't tolerate in this franchise. So going through, looking at who's available, the first person we stop on is Drew Brees. Now I tried to think if there was any way we could spin this, but I feel like even if they released him, Brees wouldn't turn against the Saints and stay in the division. Plus, he's a good guy and his injury rating isn't low enough. So next up, we come across Josh Gordon and this young man, well, actually he's older than me, but whatever, he partly inspired this entire series. You can't make a series about giving guys another chance and running the risk of suspension in return for serious talent without having him on your team. Offer made. Then we have Trent Murphy, a nice previous suspension for Peds, fits a need on our team, offer made. And then we have Randy Gregory, and he actually fills a big need on our team. He's not just the token always suspended player on defense, offer made. Then we come back to Damar Dotson, who was too good for us. His problem is everybody else is too good for him. With no other offers, we make him another one, $4.7 million less than we originally offered. Hopefully he'll be humbled and take it. With all that sorted, we still have one glaring need quarterback. Now there's some decent players available, but they don't really fit with what we're looking for. Jacoby Brissett, Teddy Bridgewater, Drew Brees, Ryan Tannehill, Case Keenum. Not that we're desperate for some of those, but they all have too high injury ratings, which did surprise me with Bridgewater. But then I came to Alex Smith. Fresh off a broken leg, but not necessarily the kind of quarterback Bruce Arians loves to work with as he prefers the big armed guys, but this is definitely only a short term solution. Joe Flacco fits the Arians mold better, but Smith is a former first overall pick, the kind of guy Arians loves to work with. See Carson Palmer and Andrew Luck for reference. So in a surprise to the sporting world, our starting quarterback next year will be Alex Smith. Not as high rated as Winston, but more careful with the ball, and more importantly, he'll only cost us $9.9 .9 million for one year, compared to Winston's average of about $24 million a year. Slight spoiler there as we move on to the next week, as you can see, every offer we made was accepted, which means Dotson lost out on almost $5 million. But then we get hit by some surprise news. Shaquille Barrett, our star pass rusher, has been suspended for the first six weeks of the season for violating the league's personal conduct policy. Now, that's a huge hit to the team. Now we'd finished all our scouting at this point, we were happy with our running back, wide receiver and tight end situations, so that saved a lot of scouting. And just before we got into the draft, we got some more bad news. Another one of our players involved in an accident, Sean Murphy Bunting, Twisted his ankle playing basketball. He'll need a week to recover, but again, we're lucky it's in the off-season. And with that, we come to the draft, the big night. So the first player we wanted, left end Reggie Bailey, was swiped by the Raiders with the sixth overall picks, three before us. But that was it. So coming on to our first pick, we had a lot of choice, but it ended up being too much freedom, actually. The players available either weren't big enough needs at their position for what we expected them to be, or in the case of defensive tackle, we had our eye on someone later on we were sure we could get. So in a weird turn of events, we took the best player available, best by our judgment, and best overall. Running back Walter Nelson, a 78 overall, ended up being the highest rated player in the draft this year, surplus to requirements in our team, but now we have some more options, I guess. Our next pick was the very first in the second round, and we ended up taking Dan Weaver, who had been in some trouble in college, so every week we'll have a 10% chance of being suspended, which will go up if we draft another troublemaker. 70 overall isn't that great, but apparently it makes him the 23rd best player, not looking hopeful this year for the rest of the draft. Eight picks later, we're back on the clock and we're sticking to offensive line where we need the most help, but it's not available this year. Another decent pick, but only a 71 overall at left tackle. In the third round, we're staying in the trenches and taking a chance on another troubled player, Raheem Lindsley, who ends up being a good pick at 74 overall. But by drafting him and Weaver, both players have a 20% chance of being suspended every week next season. In the fourth round, we didn't have too much choice, so we took the best player on our board, who happened to be a strong safety. He's not great. This year was a bust in general and we traded ourselves out of the draft with the remaining picks. So you can take a quick look here at the players ordered by overall and you can see it really wasn't a great year, especially for what we needed. We wanted Jaquiz Morris in the second, but he went a little early and apart from that we pretty much got who we wanted and thought we could get. 
and they just weren't that great. And that's it, a new look team going into a new season. We've got to carry the burden of a couple of suspensions, but apart from that, I'm quietly optimistic about the immediate future of this team. <laughs> <laughs>